Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. So ever since I reviewed Freely the Banana Girls What I Eat in a Day, I've gotten a lot of requests from all you guys for other YouTubers diets to review. So today I want to share with you a little review of Ellen Fisher's What I Eat in a Day. So Ellen and her kids live in Maui, Hawaii, which looks pretty amazing. And her and her family all uphold a plant-based diet. So great to raise your kids vegan, but of course there are some considerations and adjustments that need to be made to be making sure that we're doing it in a nutritionally balanced balanced way. So let's take a look at Ellen's What I Eat in a Day. So first of all, those kids are adorable and big kudos to Ellen for getting her kids involved in the kitchen. I think that is a fantastic and very important life skill, but I'm not a fan of big quantities of juice for children. I mean, I think what from what I can see, it looks like her son is really, really into just snacking on the whole foods himself. So I don't really know why Ellen would just let him do that and serve that as a snack. It would probably save her a lot of time and probably a lot of money as well. So I get that a lot of parents think this is the only way to get in all those vitamins and minerals, but when we're juicing, we're losing out on a lot of those really important fibers. Um, so if you're going to go the juice route, you definitely want to keep it to no more than like a quarter cup for a young child. That looks like a lot more than a quarter cup, so that would be my big concern. Um, and you know, don't just throw away that pulp. I saw her kind of skimming it off or, or straining the juice. All that pulp has the fiber. And so what you would want to do with that pulp is maybe stir it into yogurt or oats, um, or you can dehydrate it and make it into some kind of fruit and veggie leather. That would be a really great option. So you're not wasting all that great food. Breakfast. Today's having some avocado now. I just finished working out. And now we're having breakfast together. We're gonna have papaya and avocado. Oh, look it. It's definitely his favorite. Oh. So I love watching this little kid eat with his fork. He's got some great utensil skills. And I agree, avocado is definitely one of my son's favorite foods. Um, it's a great source of monounsaturated fat, so really, really healthy for babes who are growing. Also, I love all the antioxidants in that papaya. It looks like a really yummy combination. But I'd love to see some more variety here in this diet. Um, ideally, some source of iron, so maybe some pulses, some lentils or beans. That would really help balance this out and make it a lot more nutritionally complete. Super good. Super sweet today. You wanna get it yourself? So side note, it looks like Ellen is just having papaya and passion fruit for breakfast. I would love to see some protein up in here. It definitely is reminding me a lot of our friend Freely the Banana Girl. But I do love how much that Ellen really let Sandy be independent with his food. I think that is a great skill. I love that he is just getting in there with his fork. He's doing his thing. He's self-feeding. He's self-regulating. And that is a really, really important feeding skill. Mm. I also am loving that they're still breastfeeding. So the WHO recommends continual breastfeeding up to two years of age. Um, I don't really know how old Sandy is exactly, but I mean, kudos to you, mama. It is so much work. I know how hard it is. So it's great that you are keeping that up. Having said that, I am still worried a little bit about the lack of iron in these meals. So let's hope that we can balance things out throughout the rest of the day. All right, so it looks like lunch is a smoothie. Um, and again, I just wish I wasn't seeing so many liquid foods. So first at breakfast with the juice, now we've got a smoothie. I mean, I do like that she added some hemp hearts to the mix and hemp hearts, of course, are gonna add some good fats and some protein and some fiber and some iron. Um, but again, not a whole lot else. There's also some spirulina in here, which of course is packed with nutrition. Um, there is a lot of hype around spirulina and we don't have a ton of research to support it, but I do think it is a really great nutritional add-in, so that's fantastic. But it really does look like Sandy is so interested in enjoying like whole pieces of food. So I really would just have loved to see more opportunities for that. Homemade broccoli sprouts, and I have romaine lettuce, and I'm gonna mash it all up with the avocado. Squeeze a little bit of lime juice, and add some dulse to it, see veggie dulse. He loves it. So it super well into a little salad. 
So more avocados. Again, avocados, super nutritious, but I would love to see some more variety in the fats that um, Ellen's offering Sandy. Also, it seems like pretty much all the foods that Sandy's getting are like really soft, like purees um, or juices or smoothies. Not a whole lot of variety in texture and different things to pick up and explore. So I would have loved to see some more options on that front. Um, also, not a fan of the addition of the sprouts because sprouts are actually grown in a a warm environment and are often linked to foodborne illness so they're not recommended that we serve them to uh, children when they're raw so lightly cooked sprouts would have been a better choice for Sandy so I do love that she added some dulse in there to get some protein and iron um, but let's talk about Sandy's overall diet for the day so we've calculated how much nutrition Sandy's getting in a day. We did not include the breast milk, of course, because we really don't know the length of the feeds or how often he's feeding or how much was actually consumed. But based on what we can see, it does look like Sandy is meeting his nutritional needs for the day, but I would definitely say that his diet is far from balanced. So there are some vitamins and minerals that may be missing or low in Sandy's diet. So let's talk about that. First of all, let's talk about B12. B12 is a common um, nutrient of concern for people who are taking on a plant-based diet. So I'm really hoping that the family is supplementing in general. Next, the big one that I'm concerned about is of course iron. So we really need to ensure that we're getting enough iron in our baby's diets, especially after the six month mark when breast milk becomes inadequate. Um, so I like that I saw a little bit of iron in the seaweed that was added to the salad and the hemp hearts that was added to the smoothie. Um, but the smoothie was shared and you know, he really probably didn't get that much from it. Also, there was some iron in the collard greens in the morning juice, but he probably only ate like half a cup of that, which would probably amount to about one milligram of iron. Now, toddlers between one to three years actually need around seven milligrams of iron. So I would love to see more plant-based sources of iron like lentils, tofu, uh, broccoli, and fortified cereals. So my next nutrient of concern is zinc. I would have loved to see more zinc-based foods like oats, beans, legumes, um, nuts and seeds, all of which are really important for growth and development for busy babies. And then finally, let's talk about vitamin D. So because Sandy is breastfed, it's recommended that you get your vitamin D from food sources or supplements since breast milk is low in vitamin D. So you wanna look for plant-based sources like mushrooms, uh, tofu, uh, fortified nut milks, and of course, D-drops. I am in no way here to shame another mother and their family, but when I see a YouTuber being out there, sharing their life and recommending to other moms what to feed their babies, I have to put my expertise hat on. Let me also say that feeding a baby a vegan diet absolutely can be done. It just needs to be followed carefully and all vitamins, minerals, and nutrients need to be accounted for. Also, there's nothing wrong with including smoothies or the occasional bit of juice in your kids diets however I really think we need to focus on getting our kids a nice variety of different textures and consistencies to enjoy and explore not to mention when we juice everything we lose it on those beneficial fibers finally I would just like to see more variety in this kids diet I'm sure he would love to explore new foods and develop different oral motor skills and also to ensure he's getting all of the necessary nutrients in his day so if you are considering feeding your child a vegan diet or any kind of restricted diet, make sure that you're speaking to a registered dietitian and coming up with a strategy that works for both you and your family. You want to make sure you're getting this information from a trusted professional and not necessarily from a YouTuber. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with some YouTubers what I eat in a day videos that you'd like me to review. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.